This is Anona's Worship, Grow, Serve, Live podcast for January 21st, 2024. The Heart of Anona Part 2, Worship, with Rev. Jeremy Harrington. This is one of our sermon series episodes produced by Anona United Methodist Church. For more information and video versions, visit anona.com forward slash sermon series. If you're new to Anona and wish to learn more about our community, go to anona.com forward slash welcome. And now for another great message. So we are in week two of our series. You just saw the promo there on the heart of Anona. And I got to confess, I was so excited when Richard was talking about this theme coming for the pastors. He said, Jeremy, you get to preach on the Sunday about worship. And I went, yes, that's just, that's my thing. Oh my gosh. I've just, I love worship. I've been involved in it for, for so much of my life. Uh, very excited to preach on it. And then I thought, oh dear, this is going to be a little tricky. What, you know, what, what, what is the message? What, what, what do we want to learn? How are we going to grow from this? And so I was kind of wrestling with it. Normally when I work on sermons, I, I write them. I write manuscripts. And so they're around four and a half pages or so when I write them out. Um, and when I wrote this one, it was about nine pages. And I thought, I, I can't do that to them because I know you all need to get to lunch before Indian Rocks Baptist does. And so I'm, I'm trying to short. I've been trimming and okay, well, we'll save that. We'll do that another day. All right, we'll just get to the core. So if it runs a little long, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm going to get you out as quick as I can. But as I was reflecting on, on worship and just all, all that's involved with it, I was as remembering back a conversation with a group of pastors, and we were sharing war stories about our worship services. And in particular, we're talking about Easter and our Easter services. And there's this one pastor in the group that says, hey, look, I, I got you all beat. Okay, there's this guy in my church. His name is Pete. Here's the thing about Pete. He only shows up to church once a year at the early service on Easter Sunday. That's it. We don't see him all year long. He doesn't come to church. He's not in a Bible group. He's not in a, a study or in the choir or anything like that. He just somehow he shows up in church at the early service on Easter Sunday, and then he's gone. And this has happened like two years in a row. So this third year, last year, he was like, okay, I, I want to see if this guy comes back. And sure enough, they have their Easter Sunday service at the early service there, and he looks in the back while he's preaching. He sees Pete. He says, oh, my goodness, Pete's here. I need to talk to him. And so they, they complete the service there, and the pastor goes to the back of the sanctuary there and says, Pete, Pete, I'm so glad you're here. Glad you came to church this morning, but I, I need to talk to you. I got an important question to ask. Why is it that you only show up for the early service once a year on Easter Sunday? And Pete looks him in the eye and says, well, look, pastor, if Christ can rise up early only one Sunday a year, then that's good enough for me too. So what is Worship Is it coming to church? Hopefully more than once a year. Uh, you know, we hope for that. Is it singing songs? Is it hearing a message? Is it something that we just check off our to-do list to get done each and every week? As I kind of step into this information and wrestle with it, I always like to start simply and then expand. So I start oftentimes just looking up words. And so I went to the Holman Bible Dictionary. It's a great resource. And I just looked up the word worship. What does it say about the word worship? And it says this. It's very interesting. Worship is the human response to the self-revelation of the triune God. I'll say that again. It's a lot packed in a short sentence. Worship is the human response, our response, to the self-revelation of the triune God. So in other words, worship is our response to the presence of God already here. God's already present. We know that. We celebrate that. But worship is our response to God's presence, okay? But I want to explore that a little deeper because I looked at that and I said, you know, there's more to the story and I think there's more to us as well. And so there's one passage that really fascinated me. This is in Isaiah. Uh, it's Isaiah chapter 43 and this particular section talks about the people of Israel and there's a lot going on for them at this time and really this passage is God reassuring the Israelites. He's reassuring them, you're okay, I've got you, I'm here for you, you're not alone, I'm here with you. And so it starts off in Isaiah 43, uh, 1 and 2. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You hear the reassurance there. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. 
So here's God reassuring the Israelites. But then a few verses later in chapter 43, God makes it very clear the reason for the creation, salvation, and deliverance of the people of Israel. So I'm skipping ahead now to verse 7. This is chapter 43, verse 7. And God says, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, whom I created for my glory. And then he goes further in verse 21. We skip ahead a little further. And God says, the people who I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. So as I'm kind of putting all this together for me, I'm seeing that we were created for God's glory so that we might praise God. That's why you and I were created. We were literally created for and to worship. You see, worship is not only our response to God, we were created for it as well. And that's really important for us to hear when we dive into what is worship or what it is not. So what is worship? Okay, we want to know the nitty-gritty. What's the details? What should it be? What should it look like? Um, I want to start with what worship is not. Now, this is a a Jeremy uh, kind of excursion here. Some of my things as being a worship minister for now close to, actually, over 30 years. um, A lot of things in my head as I was kind of wrestling with this about what is worship not. And here's a couple. These, These are probably familiar. In fact, there's one you might remember if you were here last Sunday. Richard lifted up. Worship is not about just attending church. It isn't, okay? If, if worship for you is just checking off your list, you're here, you're done, that's it, that's not worship, okay? It's not about checking off requirement or completing a to-do. Worship is about a genuine desire to commune with God. Remember, this is our response to God. And it's a growing of that personal relationship with us and God together, So it's not about just attending church. Another thing that worship is not, this might be a hard one to hear. It was hard for me. Worship is not about you. And worship is not about me. You see, worship is not about getting our needs met. Worship is not about you or me getting filled each week. Though I've got to confess, I've said that before. Oh, I got to be filled this week. I need this. It's not about that. It's not about having the right music or the right worship style that you prefer or the right programs for your kids or grandkids or the right pastor who agrees with your worldview in life. Worship involves surrendering ourselves to God and aligning our will with God's will. Back a couple weeks ago when I preached the New Year's Eve sermon on December 31st, I lifted up the Wesley Covenant Prayer. John Wesley wrote this beautiful covenant prayer, I think, that we really can use frequently throughout the year. There's one line in it that really sang to me this week, and it says this. John wrote, I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. That's surrendering ourselves fully to God. And here's the beautiful thing. When we surrender ourselves to God and align ourselves to God's will, then we can find fulfillment in worship. It's not that we can't. We can, of course, have that. That's not the purpose of worship. That fulfillment in those moments is so beautiful because it's not dependent on that worship style or the music that was played that Sunday or how funny or interesting the pastor was this past week because the focus in that moment is not on ourselves. Our focus is not on those things. Our focus is on the one whom we are here to worship. It's not about me. It's not about you. Worship is also not a performance or a concert. Now, that's kind of a a given, an easy one. You say, of course, Jeremy, it's not. Now, I got to say as an aside, this has nothing to do with clapping in church. I know in some circles we have our clappers and anti-clappers. Okay, I know where you all are. I get it. Okay. Some of you all say, you know, it's just, oh, we have to. No, we can't. clap. However the Lord moves you, that's good. The Lord moves you to clap. One year we had someone in contemporary as a tambourine lady. She just brought a tambourine and woo, it was interesting. So I don't encourage that. But, um, but if you want to clap, you don't clap, that's fine. There's nothing about that. It's that worship is not a performance for us to view or watch. When we come to worship, this isn't for us to say, you know, I got to think about, I I just, you know, I wonder what they're going to tell me today. Or, you know, uh, I guess I'm just going to go listen to some music. 
Because the reality is, for so many of us, we live in generations now of passive connections. Think back to our baby boomers. We got any baby boomers out there? A few? Okay. Baby boomers were actually known as the very first TV generation. Because our baby boomers is when television became mass available. And you had all these shows, and it was a great thing. You had all these shows you could watch and excitement. But what happens is with television is it's static, right? It's viewing. It's not interactive. And so we move all the way from baby boomers and Gen X to even today our millennials and Gen Z who are our internet generation. And yes, there is some interplay with internet. There is some more communication. But at the end of the day, the internet is full of live stream videos and YouTube videos. It's not a whole lot different than the old televisions we used to watch. You can comment or two, sure. But the reality is it becomes a passive experience there. And we've grown accustomed to passive viewing. And the challenge is, if we're not careful, our very worship can become a passive experience for us. And that's not what this is, folks. Worship is an active experience that you are called to participate in fully. When we pray, we pray. When we affirm our faith, we affirm our faith. We even sing together. Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. This is, if there's one thing that you leave the doors with today, I want you to remember this first. I'm going to say it, you repeat it. You ready? Let everything, Let everything. that has breath, that has breath. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. Okay, we got this in contemporary eventually. They got it all down. We had kind of a little dance. There was even a song they did with it. But everything that has breath, Praise the Lord. Worship is active and vibrant. One of my, okay, one of my kind of challenges is for years, I would have people, I'd see them not singing, and I'd say, hey, you're not singing, come join us. And they'd say, oh, no, I can't, the favorite phrase, I can't carry a tune in a bucket. I swear if I hear that one more time, if I had a nickel every time someone said that, I could have bought Amazon.com. I swear, it is insane. And so, oh, I can't carry a tune. So I have a new response. If, you, if someone comes up, oh, I can't carry a tune in the bucket, I'm going to say, Psalm 150, do you have breath? Well, yeah, I'm breathing. Then you better get praising the Lord right now. Here we go. <laughs> chop, chop. Let's do some singing here. Worship is not a performance. It is not something for us to be static. It's full in. It's a full, I tell the choir, worship is a full contact sport. All right? It is. You got to get the shoulder pads and the helmet on. We are coming to worship. The other thing that worship is not is worship is not optional. Now, this is a weird one. You might say, well, yeah, it is. I don't have to come to church. And you're right. God gives us this thing called free will. You can choose to say, you know what? It's 39 degrees outside. I'm going to sleep in this morning. Or those of you online, you can say, you know, there's something far more interesting on YouTube. I think I'm going to go watch this over here. Um, You do have that option because you have free will. This is nothing to do with that. Worship is something that you and I, remember, were created to do. It's why you're here. It's why I'm here. First and foremost, now you might say, Jeremy, no, 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 that's not the case, you know. Um, I, I was brought to, the, I was born to do blank and fill in whatever. I was born to play the piano. I was born to sing. I was born to be a nurse. I was born to teach, whatever. Fill in the blank for whatever you were born to do. And what I would say is that's great and that's wonderful and those are gifts that you've been given in your life, but that's not what you were born to do. Those are gifts you've been given. What you were born for is to worship what we all were. We are not optional in worship. So what is worship? We've talked about all these things over here, what worship is not. What is worship then? Well, worship is praise and thanksgiving. Psalm 100 is one of my favorites. This is my life scripture, Psalm 100. When I was ordained, that was what I had my Bible open to. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Gratitude is a key component of worship, folks. And I got to confess, there are times when I come to worship, I forget that. I forget the gratitude. Because what do I do? I bring my laundry list of to-dos. Okay, God, don't forget. Pray for this one. Pray for that. Pray for that. Hey, man, avoid that. And Oh, man, pray for that. When instead, what's the first thing I should be doing coming in the doors? Praising. Okay? 
When we gather for worship, we should be letting our hearts overflow with thanksgiving for the countless blessings God has bestowed upon us. Did you know this morning that it could be 40 below and snow outside, but it's not? Isn't that a blessing? There you go. I gave you one for free. You come up with your own, okay? All right. Complain about 39 degrees, I tell you. Worship is praise and thanksgiving. Worship is also word and sacrament. Word and sacrament. We celebrate the scripture, the living, breathing revelation of God's will, and we seek to grow in our understanding of scripture and God's teachings for us. And I think as important of learning it, of how do we put God's word into action in our daily living? What are we going to do with it when we walk out these doors, folks? How do we put that into action? Worship is also celebrating the sacraments. Communion, where we come in the presence of the Holy Spirit, poured out in the bread and the juice to be that body and blood of Christ that is offered to you and me to wash ourselves clean so that we can face the week ahead of us and know we're good and God's got us. And we celebrate baptism, whether it's children and babies or adults and seniors, but we celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit with the family of God all together, inviting people to take that journey with us as we seek to grow closer to God. Worship is word and sacrament. Worship also includes music and song, and I'm so thankful for that one. Man, I just, I, one of the things I love about the Bible, there's a lot to love, but what I love is you take that Bible and you open up right in the middle, what do you find? A whole section dedicated to worship. Do you know what that chapter is called? The Psalms. There are, there are 100, I've lost 150? I've, I don't know, there's a lot. So uh, there's, there are a lot of Psalms in Scripture. There are songs of joy. There's songs of sorrow. There's songs of anger. There's songs of fear. There are songs that uplift our human condition, whatever it may be, and God's desire to be in relationship with us, even in the best of times or the worst of times. And we sing about them in both places. Isn't that weird? Wow. We sing the praises, but boy, when life's going a mess, what are we called to do? Sing God's praises, even when it's rough. Music has the power to uplift our spirits and express the depths of our very worship. One of my favorite quotes is from uh, Hans Christian Andersen. Wrote a lot of fairy tales. You might remember growing up as a kid, but he wrote this quote. It's very simple. It says, when words fail, music speaks. There are times sometimes that, you know, we can hear the words, but when that song hits us in the heart, it's just very different. Worship involves music and song. Worship involves both our head and our heart. John Wesley was real big on this one, all right? So important we have both. The ability to be fully engaged in worship is to worship with our head and heart. And there are times sometimes we leave one of them home, isn't there? Right? Maybe we come to church and we're all up here in the head. Let me just see what that pastor is going to be talking about. I don't agree with that one. And, uh, that, uh, yeah, I got my list for him. We're all up here. Where's here? Or just the opposite. We're all here. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We're just kind of flopping all over the place. Holy Spirit. Actually, my, uh, my okay, side. I married my wife, who's actually Pentecostal, and had a great experience going to some wonderful revivals. And man, if you want to see Holy Spirit alive, oh my gosh, go to a Pentecostal service. You just, it's wild, it's crazy, it's fun. But sometimes it's just all heart. And so we have to say, okay, well, where's our head? We got, we got to bring our thoughts. God's given us both. How do we bring both? To be fully engaged in a worship, we have to remember Matthew 23, 27. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, and then all your mind. Yeah, we throw the soul in there too, so you get three for it. But worship is an active participation of our heart and head. And something about worship we don't talk about very often is that there actually are different ways to express it. We have what's called personal worship and corporate worship, personal and corporate. John Wesley was very uh, adamant that we experience both in our faith journey in life. 
both personal worship and corporate. For John Wesley, when he talked about personal worship, he encouraged people to grow deep in personal relationship with God through prayer, through meditation, through reflection on Scripture, on our own individual moments there. That's a part of our lives. That's a part of our journey there. He called it personal holiness combined with spiritual discipline. And these elements really help shape those components for our own personal worship. And the great thing about personal worship is you can worship God anywhere, anytime, right? It doesn't have to be in the walls of a church. You can be out with your family for dinner, and it can be a time of worship. You can be at your kid's recital. It can be a time for worship. You can be out camping in the woods, you know, with the snakes and bears. It can be a time of worship wherever it is. But here's the thing. When we talk about personal worship, that's only part of the equation. And I know for me, one of the interesting things, being a pastor, you know, people see you sometimes differently. And so, you know, they'll see me in the grocery store or something. And especially people that maybe used to come to church, but then stop coming for whatever reason, you know, or haven't been in a long time, and they get embarrassed. But I'm I'm just me. I'm like, hey, it's great to see you. And they're like, they're getting embarrassed. Oh, well, you know, you don't understand. I haven't been to church in a while, but but I, I am a religious person. And I was like, oh, well, that's good to know. It's like, yeah, yeah, I just, I worship. I have my own worship time and, you know, our family does our thing or, you know, we gather out with these things and do our family times. And that's all in good, but that's not complete. Think about it if you went to your doctor. If you went to your doctor and said, you know, doc, um, I, health has been kind of a little shaky and I need to get healthier in the new year. And so I've decided to get healthier. All I'm going to do is eat Cheerios three times a day. That's it. For the rest of my life, I'm just going to eat you. Mmm, I love Cheerios. They're good for you, right? It's low in sugar. It reduces your cholesterol. It's got lots of fiber to get things moving. That's important as we get older, just saying. But, you know, I'm just going to be eating lots of Cheerios, and that's going to be great. What's your doctor going to say? That's not enough. If you really want to have a fully balanced health, Cheerios is great. You're going to need something with that. So when we look at personal worship, that's a wonderful expression for us. But God didn't create us just for that as well. If we're to experience fully the kind of worship that God has called us to and created us for, it involves both those personal moments and coming together in community. Now, the official title I've I've read on this one, they call it corporate worship, I get it. I understand it. I'm just not a fan of the word corporate. I don't know. It kind of sounds businessy to me. For me, I I prefer the, the phrase community worship because what are we doing? We're in community, right? We're not by ourselves. We're not off having this prayer alone. We're in community with one another. This is when we have community worship, we pray together. When we have community worship, we sing together. We hear the word and participate in the sacraments and share the good news together in community with one another. Do you hear a theme? Keyword together in that. And here's the cool thing. In community worship, it extends beyond the walls of this church. In fact, I know for Richard and I and for all of our pastors, our prayer for you every Sunday when we have a time to talk and reflect together, our prayer is that whatever is said, whatever you've experienced here today does not stay in this building. It goes out the doors with you in the week ahead that we can extend our ministry beyond the walls of the church. Wesley called this social holiness. And this was when we worshiped together. Our hope and prayer is that it should result in action. Something should happen. Our hope is something is different for you. Maybe we're thinking differently about something. Maybe we're feeling differently about something. Maybe we're committing differently about something we might do in the next week or weeks ahead whether it's acts of compassion, acts of justice and mercy or love lived out in the world, expressions of authentic worship of God is when we gather together in community. And worship should move us to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world today. We should be excited to get out those doors, not because we're done or you're going to beat the Baptists to lunch. I know some of y'all, but because you're excited to put forth what you've got with you and making a difference. And finally, worship is transformational. 
That's our hope, right? Worship transforms us. This is where Romans uh, 12 comes in, I think, so beautifully. I've used this passage a lot because it is so deep. It's a short passage with just a lot of meat in it. So let's put that up on the screen. Romans 12, 1 and 2, the new life in Christ. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. When we experience authentic worship, it transforms us. It transforms us personally, right? It helps us as individuals grow spiritually in our own faith journey. When we grow and transform, we can deepen our faith and our spiritual practices and get even better at all those things about prayer and scripture and connecting with loved ones and being a a hands and feet of Christ in the world, all these different ways. We can grow those in ourselves to be even closer to God. And it also transforms us as a community. It transforms us together. It transforms our hearts and minds in our calling to rise above our individual differences. We are all beautifully and wonderfully made, and we're all so different. But even in our differences, we can rise and come together in unity and celebration of one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all who is above all and in all and through all. Friends, this is worship and so much more. This is what you were created to be and how you and I are called to live out our lives personally, individually, for ourselves and in community with one another. We hope you join us in that journey. Let's pray. God, as we um, wrestle with worship this morning, so many things can come to mind. The thought of praise, of coming to celebrate you, the fact of us bringing gratitude to your house is such an important thing. The opportunity for personal growth, for going deeper in your word, for exploring what it means to grow closer to you because we were created to worship you. And as we come together as a community, as we come together to hear the word and sing the music, to be fully engaged in worship, every step, that we are called to live out what we learn today on bringing your message to the world around us. We pray all this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have been to worship this morning. All right, now repeat after me. Let everything everything that that has breath praise the Lord. That's my prayer for you this week. Number one, find time to praise God. In your personal time here in church, find those opportunities to have those moments of joy and celebration and gratitude. And my second prayer is that you take the next step in your worship life. Whatever that is for you. If you're regular here on Sunday mornings in worship, congratulations, that is wonderful. Make sure you're fully in, okay? You are fully here, you're fully engaged. It might be for you exploring that personal time of worship during the week. What does that look like? Or those of you online, it might be the reverse. You're checking us out online, you say, you know what, I haven't been to that church before. Maybe I can come be in community with them too. And we invite you to do so. Come on in. Check us out, be a part of the community here with us. Or maybe you've been doing that for a while and your personal time and your church time is great. You're looking to take that next step. I want to invite you to be a part of the team. We are looking for people to be happy, excited, wonderful worship people, where there's greeters and ushers at the door, singers in the choir, people involved all over the place, making a difference so that we might gather and praise because that's what we were created for. And I invite you to take that next step in your life and experience the joy of responding to a loving God waiting for you. If you found this message meaningful, share it with others. To find more great episodes and stay up to date, subscribe to another United Methodist Church's podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere you find your favorite podcast shows. 
In addition, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and find the community on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Anona Church. You can join us on our campus in Largo, Florida and discover new ways to reach out to the Pinellas County community. Be a part of the Anona Church family as we worship, grow, serve, and live.